Hello friends, welcome to another video. And today I'd like to share one of the free lessons from my OpenTunes course, a complete guide to OpenTunes for traditional 2D animation. And this will give you a flavour of the kind of lesson that you'll find in the course. But it's also something I've not covered on this channel, so wanted to share it here. But if you're interested in the course, just follow the link in the description, and there you'll find more free lessons and the full details of the course. But now, let's just take a look at the RGB colour picker. It does much more than you might think. This lesson is about the RGB picker. And the RGB picker is very similar to the style picker, as it's a way to choose colours. The difference being that the style picker helps you choose a style that you've already set up and used in your current level. And that's just a shortcut to using the palette list. Whereas the RGB picker is for setting up a new style, but based on something you've already used in any level. And it works in a very similar way to the standard colour picker, commonly found in drawing software. But as this is OpenTunes, it has a few different features. So here, you can see we've got drawings from each of the three level types, added in three columns. And on all of them, I've drawn some simple shapes and coloured in the first two with different colours. So the first shape on the left is the vector level. Then in the middle, it's the tuned raster level. And on the right, it's the standard raster level. And this one doesn't yet have any colour. So the RGB picker tool, here on the toolbar, allows me to be on any level but pick the colour from any other level in this frame. So while I'm on the raster level, let's take a look. So there's two very simple options here. The first is the type drop-down, and this just lets you choose how you're going to pick the colour to use. So first, I'll leave it on normal, which is the type you'll probably use most often. And with this option, you can simply choose an entry in your palette, and then click on a colour in the viewer. And your palette entry is now set to this colour. and you can click on a colour from any level so I can pick this blue from the vector level or this yellow from the Toons raster and then I can use it to draw or fill with so let's fill the top part of this shape on the raster level and as I mentioned in the style picker lesson using the keyboard to change tools will really speed up your process so it's R to change to the RGB picker and F for the fill tool so if I press R, I can pick this green, and F, I can fill that shape. So that's how the picker tool works in most of the drawing software you may have come across. But OpenTunes has an extra treat for us. You don't just have to pick the one colour. You can pick an average of multiple colours. But how do you do that? Well, you just use the other type options. So you've got rectangular, freehand, or polyline. So if I pick the rectangular option and then draw a rectangle around more than one colour, the average will be taken and set on your current palette entry. So I've dragged this roughly 50% over the red and 50% over the blue and I've got a purple colour. So now I can use that as a fill for the next shape. And the two other options in the type drop down do the same thing, but allow you to differently draw an area to average. So with the freehand, you can just draw a shape, and when you release the pointer, the shape is completed by joining it to the start position. And the polyline allows you to click points that are joined up to create a shape made of straight lines. And then for the final line, just double click, and that joins it to the start position. And the polyline allows you to click points that are joined up to create a shape made of straight lines, which is useful when marking out a shape against a straight edge. So if I use it on the straight edged green to blue area, you'll see how useful it can be. And this is really useful if you want to include a nearby colour when painting a shadow for instance, to help show that the reflective light on your object has picked up some colour from a nearby object. 
But also, if you've got a grainy image where pixels can vary quite a lot, especially in a photo, but they appear on average as a single colour, it can be very useful. So, I've got a photo here, and in it you'll see many different colours to the pixels making up the leaves, for instance. So you might choose to take an average of them, probably using the freehand tool in this case. And then you can paint with this new averaged colour. So that's the red leaves. And then here are the green leaves. So the final option for this tool is the passive pick tick box, which if that's ticked as you hover over a colour, it shows the RGB value on the options toolbar here at the top and changes the background of this panel to the colour that you hover over. And then you can still click if you want to select it. But don't forget, as I mentioned in an earlier lesson, if you want to preview this colour, especially if you're using one of the averaging types, then turn off the auto option of the style editor at the bottom left of the panel here. And then you can compare the colour with what you previously had. So with auto unticked, and I'm in freehand mode, if I now draw an area covering more than one colour, you can see the difference shown on the left of the style editor's preview area. And you can still see the previous colour on the right, but it hasn't changed the actual colour for this palette entry. So you can keep highlighting areas until you get exactly the colour you're after, and then when you're happy, you can just click the apply button. Or, if you don't want to change it, you can simply click the colour on the right. So that's the RGB colour picker, really useful for choosing and mixing colours from other levels. Have you always wanted to animate but didn't know how to start and software seemed expensive and difficult to use? Well with OpenToons it's free, powerful and once you know how it's easy to use. And it's my mission to get you animating with it today. Hi, my name's Darren and I've been teaching OpenToons for the past three years showing thousands of students, just like you, how easy it is to animate with, and cutting through the jargon to show that anyone can animate with it. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to animate traditionally using OpenToons. And the course is designed for students brand new to OpenToons, as well as those new to animation. So take a look at the free lessons I've offered below, and then why not sign up and join me animating traditionally with OpenToons.